Good afternoon, folks. Don Tyson, Blake Perryman coming to you from Dover High School, Dover, Oklahoma. Opening round of the regional tournament that was scheduled for yesterday, and they had a little snowy weather up this direction, so it's been postponed till today. Fort Cobb, Broxton, Lady Mustangs taking on the Oaks Lady Warriors today. Big ball game because it's win or go home, Blake. So it's uh, our backs are against the wall, as uh, as they say. So if we win today, we play tomorrow afternoon. If we lose, we start playing softball on Monday. So what's your thoughts on today's game? Well, certainly, you know, it, it's a tough spot whenever you lose in, in districts and have to win six games in a row to reach the big house. And there's been some teams do that. Uh, so certainly a long road ahead for any of the teams playing today. Uh, I, I, I'm confident the Lady Mustangs, you know, they were they were one shot away from winning last week. And they came back at around the end of the third quarter until basically the last minute of the game. They went on a 12-0 run, tied the game at 39, and then ended up going to overtime. And Lady Mustangs had a couple chances there at the end to win that one. And right. then in overtime, Dover just, just couldn't miss something that they did a lot of in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Kind of allowed us to come back. But Well, Ginger picking up her fifth foul with a couple of minutes to go that, in regulation was that certainly really hurt Lady Mustangs. But, yeah, they, you're right. That fourth quarter was impressive uh, to come from that deficit to uh, tie the game. And just a, just a couple of inches away from winning that one. But anyway, it's water under the bridge. They've got a uh, ball game today. I think I think we can handle Oaks and uh, move on down the road. But uh, got to play well. Uh, as we mentioned, it's their uh, do-or-die situation. So you That's really right. can't have any uh, long sc scoring droughts and such as that. You've got to play well uh, from start to finish to keep advancing. And, and some of the psychology with it maybe, you know, there's been some teams where they – go undefeated through the playoffs and don't play near as hard as they could have. And, and sometimes they'll lose one, and then after they lose that one, it kind of lights a fire under them. Right. And, yep. and so whenever you pretty much play every game on the brink of elimination, it makes you play They're a little sharper. bit harder. And they did Friday night. That was the same situation in the opening round of the district. They had to win that one to move on, and they did, played well. So I anticipate Coach Rogers will have them ready today. Thanks for joining us, folks. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our fine sponsors sponsoring our broadcast all year. And Shelly Dissey with ABC Superior Realty. For all your real estate sales needs, give Shelly a call at 580-302-1974. T-Birds Convenience Store in downtown Port Cobb, owned by, operated by Mr. Travis Birchie. Does a great job of taking care of our community and uh, supporting Mustang Sports. Washita Valley Bank, locally owned and operated since 1902. Great folks down there at the bank. I appreciate them giving me the time off to uh, come out here at Dover today and uh, broadcast this ball game. So appreciate Mike and all those people at Washita Valley Bank, things they do. Keystone Foods, new partner. They provide breakfast and lunch for many of the Caddo County schools. I appreciate them joining us. Carnegie Fiber, for all your high-speed internet needs. Located in Carnegie, Oklahoma, 580-654-1002. And the Southwest Oklahoma Driving School, 580-512-6936. We're about set to go here for the opening round of the regional tournament. Fort Cobb, Broxton, Lady Mustangs in their home white uniforms today, taking on the Oaks Lady Warriors. And they are in their cardinal colored uniforms. If you're wondering where Oaks is located, believe it or not, it's 69 miles east of Tulsa. So it's a long drive from <laughs> Oaks, Oklahoma, over Ooh. here to Dover. So might as well be in Arkansas. Pretty much, pretty much. We're gonna we're gonna pause for a moment for our national anthem.
first game of the district tournament last week. They defeated Kearney 48 to 47, and they lost to Payton 46-33. Their starter, starting lineups are number 11, Rachel Puckett, number 12, Kenzie Quinn, number 21, Laney Martinez, number 23, Chassie Tucker, and number 34, Brixie Watkins. The Lady Warriors are coached for Mr. Dan Geringer, assisted by Sonny Turtle. As I mentioned, they're located 69 miles east of Tulsa, so they've had quite a long drive to get here today. For the Fort Cobb Roxton Lady Mustangs, they start a sophomore, number one, Zoe Brown, a sophomore, number three, Kalia Silverhorn, a junior, number 12, Ginger Bear, a senior, number 14, Riley Rep, and a freshman, number 15, Reagan Rep. The Lady Mustangs are coached by Miss Jana Rogers, assisted by Kelsey Shumpert. They come into this game with a record of nine wins and 17 losses. First game of the district, they defeated Oilton 56 to 33, and in the district finals last Saturday evening, they lost to Dover in overtime 55 to 46. Lady Mustangs in their home white uniforms will be going right to left as we start the ball game. And we're about set to go on a beautiful Friday afternoon in Dover, Oklahoma. Jumping center will be number 34, Brixie Watkins against Ginger Bear. And we are about set. We have three officials today. Last week we, we had two in the district. We'll have three this week. Tap is controlled by Bear. And Brown into the front court for the Lady Mustangs. And Oaks comes out in a Looks like a 1-3-1 one, one defense. Quickly over to around to Reagan Rip. Out of Silverhorn. Left side to Brown. They're trying to get it into Riley Rip. Can't do it. They go around the perimeter. Pretty good defense by Oaks to start the contest. Very quick guards they have. There's Bear at the free throw line. And she lost the ball. Turnover to Oaks. Drilling all the way down. Layup is good by Kenzie Quinn. Puts Oaks on top. Two to nothing. Just underway. Early turnover for the Lady Mustangs. But good aggressive guard play by Oaks. Get the ball into Bear. She's covered up quickly by Watkins, who has quite a height advantage. There's a left wing three by Brown, and it'll go out of bounds along the baseline. Tough start so far, Blake, for offensively anyway for Lady Mustangs. It looks like Watkins is going to be pretty hard to shoot the ball over. Pass down low. Over to Martinez, now out front. That's Tucker holding into the paint, and we're going to have a traveling violation called. I, th I thought that was a travel. Now they called it a little late, but. Better late than never, as, as they That's say. Right. Right? One turnover apiece now. And let's see if the Mustang can do something with this 2-1-2 two, two zone they're playing right now. Very aggressive guard play out front. They get the ball down to Bear. Watkins. On her. Boy, she's going to be hard to shoot over. She's four or five inches taller than Ginger. That's pretty uncommon. Ginger is usually one of the tallest players on the court. Three-pointer by Silverhorn is good. Puts the Lady Mustangs on top three to two. That's Boy, here down the stretch, she's been probably the most consistent shooter the Lady Mustangs have had. There's a turnover in the backcourt as Fort Cobb put on a little backcourt pressure and caused the turnover, a travel. And Fort Cobb now... Get the ball back. Yeah, you're right about Silverhorn. She's uh, been a really good outside shooter, and if we're not able to get much in the post area, that's going to really come in handy today. Reagan with it, deep in the corner, out to Brown. Quickly into Bear. Tries to go around Watkins, and that's a good move right there as Bear's going to draw the foul on Brixie Watkins. It appears like she wants to try to block your shot, and if she does that, yep. she's going to draw some fouls today. Ginger Bear will be shooting two. Good free throw shooter normally. Generally leads the Mustangs in scoring. That's her first points good. And it's four to two. Thing we gotta worry, be concerned about mostly with Ginger is getting into early foul trouble and she fouled out of the game Saturday night. So uh, 
Got to be careful with those fouls. Pressure in the backcourt by the Lady Mustangs. Brown really harassing. Martinez, they get the ball down low, shot no good. Bear clears the rebound. Quickly into the front court comes Brown. Now out to Silverhorn. These guards, these two guards for uh, Oaks, they really like to pressure the ball. And there's a shot by Bear, no good. Hawk Watkins tips it over to Quinn. Went out of bounds and stay with Oaks. I think that's probably what their plan is. They let they let uh, Watkins kind of patrol the paint, and then these guards get out on the wing shooters and try to create some pressure out on the edges. There's a steal by Silverhorn as she picked their pocket. Now into the front court comes Sport Cobb, leading five to two. Bounce pass to Bear at the free throw line. A little 15 footer is good. Watkins didn't get back in time, and Bear had a wide open 15 footer, and it's a five point lead for Sport Cobb rocks. And Tucker, double team, they lob it into the front court. Backside pass to Watkins. She couldn't handle it, but it's taken by Kenzie Quinn. Out front to Martinez, now over to Chassie Tucker dribbling out front. Good pressure by Fort Cubs guards, Brown and Silverhorn really harassing the ball handlers out front. There's a pass down low to Watkins. Good defense that time by Reagan Rep as she came over from the backside. And not only did she get the turnover, but she also caused a foul on Brixie Watkins, which that'll be two on her. And she's going to take an early exit here. Going to be replaced by Alyssa Hawley. Not near as tall as Brixie, so I'd, I'd anticipate Ginger doing some, doing some work now, Blake. Left wing is Rep in the corner to Reagan. Three-pointer on the way. A little too strong. Ginger with a nice rebound, working hard in the paint. Shot's no good, but she'll go to the line to shoot two more. Like she kind of got hit upside the head there. Don, I think I can tell you who's going to have the big game today. Oh, who's that? Ginger. <laughs> well, <laughs> so far, so good. She's got four of the seven. Yeah, I believe you're right about it. She's really active. Uh, rebounding and Three for three at the line. Yeah, she, uh, you know, playoff basketball normally brings out the best in people. And it appears to me Fort Cobb is focused today. They really look sharp so far. They lead it nine to two. Good defense by Brown in the backcourt. Just now into the front court comes Oaks. Tucker has the ball batted away. Another turnover. That's five so here, far here. Halfway through the first period, Reagan Rep thought about the three-pointer, and they swing it around the perimeter instead. Brown with it to Reagan. Baseline three on the way. Good. Reagan Rep with the long three-pointer for her first basket. And the Mustangs lead it 12-2. to two. Riley got her hand on the pass, but Oaks able to retrieve it. Good shot block, shot blocked by Bear. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Oaks. Good verticality on that. Uh, that's the key for Ginger is not swatting at it and picking up a, a needless foul here. 3.40 to play, opening period. Lady Mustangs, 12 to 2 lead. Puck it over to Kenzie Quinn in the lane. Her shot is no good, but she's fouled. And the foul is going to be charged to Reagan Rep. First foul on the Lady Mustangs. And shooting two will be Kenzie Quinn. And she rattles the first one home. She's got all three of them for the Lady Warriors so far. Rep with the rebound. And Brown into the front court. Reagan all alone, three-pointer on the way. Good, that's two in a row from the same spot. You know, they didn't take the bait the first time, Blake. They didn't. <laughs> she's wide open out there. They never offered to come out and defend her. You know, we might have spoke too soon. Both Ginger and Reagan <laughs> have six now. Yeah, yeah. good balance scoring so far. There's another turnover. Good pressure by the guards. Silverhorn into the front court. There's Riley now from that same spot. Her three-pointer's a little short. 
And Tucker there with the rebound. Yeah, Reagan hit two threes from the same position on the floor against that zone defense. There's a drive by Martinez. Her shot's too high. Rebound and put back to good by Alyssa Hawley. And it's 15 to 5 now. Brown will walk it into the front court. Leaving Riley all alone over here. Left wing three on the way is good. Riley rip. Just because she's over two doesn't mean leave her open. <laughs> she, and that ought to teach him. Uh, yeah, I'd you know? say so. That's four trays already for the Lady Mustangs here in the opening period. Good start. Reagan Rep now. Another takeaway. Up ahead to Brown. Now back to Riley Rep. Th right wing three. Good. Riley now with two in a row. <laughs> Timeout taken by Oaks as the Lady Mustangs out to a 21 to 5 lead. And it will be a 30 second timeout. We'll be back after this short break. Your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405 726 0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Washita Valley Bank, locally owned and operated since 1902, proudly serving the Fort Cobb area with knowledgeable and friendly professionals that actually care about your financial well-being. Online banking, loans, certificate of deposits, safe deposit boxes, 24-hour telephone banking, and an ATM. For service you can trust, Washita Valley Bank, 405-643-2305. Member FBI. It'll be Oaks basketball. Out of the timeout, two minutes to play here, opening period. A little token pressure in the backcourt. Try to get them, trap them at the half line. Ball loose, cross-court pass is intercepted by Riley Rep. Dribbles all the way down, her layup is blocked. And out of bounds well, off of, of Oaks. There. <laughs> Normally that's an automatic call, foul call right yeah. there on that when you take it into traffic like that. But Lady Mustangs will maintain possession. There's Silverhorn. They come out on her. They're, they're, they're more a little cognizant of our shooters now. There's a turnover. They tried to get it into Savage, who checked in, replacing Bear during the timeout. They kind of they went out on our shooter that time and after the timeout. There's a long three-pointer. No good. Riley Rep there with a nice rebound, and she's going to be hooked on the arm. I believe that's going to be Alyssa Hawley, I think. That'll be her second personal. So the two post players for Oaks now both have two personal fouls. And that's four team fouls on Oaks. Riley Rip in the corner to Reagan, got behind the defense, bumps it off the glass, no good. Nice rebound there by Alyssa Hawley for the Lady Warriors. Under a minute to play now. Right side to go to Quinn, now back to Tucker. Tuck it into Quinn. Now out in the corner they go. Tucker behind the back pass. 40 seconds to play. Over to Puckett. In the corner, that's Tucker. Long three-pointer grazes the front of the iron, and Silverhorn comes away with the rebound. Quickly down the left side, left-handed layups too hard off the backboard. Savage there for the putback, and she's going to draw a foul on number 13, I believe, or number 12. That'll be her first personal. Savage will shoot two free throws now with 27 seconds to play opening period. And Savage first free throw good. So far the Lady Mustangs are five for five from the line as Bear and Demery Weaver check in replacing the Rep sisters. And Savage free throw crawls over the front of the rim. 23 to 5, outstanding first quarter so far. 21 seconds of play, we're going to have another turnover. Traveling called in the backcourt against the Oaks. You know, if we score two more points, Blake, in this quarter, we'll be on a <laughs> on, on pace for 100, 100, yeah. Yeah, we'll be on pace for 100. I wouldn't put it, put it past me. There's 20 seconds left, so... 
Well, I think the odds of us getting to 25 are much greater than us getting to 100, but well, anyway, nevertheless, we'd be on pace for it, right? <laughs> well, we could not that it matters. We could set even, and they could continue <laughs> on pace for 20, and we'd yeah, still win. There you go. Try to get it into Bear, and it's poked away quickly by Quinn with two seconds to play. Opening period, Lady Mustangs will have an opportunity to, they're going to bring Reagan in, I, I would assume, to try to get a three-point shot off here probably. Bear to inbound. In the corner to go to Savage. Now back to Bear, and it's turned over. After one period of play, Fort Cobb Broxton, 23. Oaks, Lady Warriors, five. We'll be back after this one-minute timeout. Proud supporters of Fort Cobb Mustangs. The name of the store is T-Birds. Come see Connie for our daily lunch specials. Mm-mm, good. We offer cold drinks, hot food, and a clean environment. Also, $1 Fountain Pop Wednesdays. See you soon. We are your premier best in-state driving school, located in southwest Oklahoma at Fort Cobb Public School. We can provide all the services related to driving in the state of Oklahoma, such as driver's education, in-house testing capabilities, permits, and drive testings for a license. The only thing that you will be required from DPS is your eye exam. We have certified instructors that use our cars to teach your students how to be the best drivers from the beginning. Come see us today for all your driving needs. We're bringing five... All right, Blake, what's the shooting percentages there in the first period? Lady Mustangs in the first quarter were 46% from the field and 62% from three. <laughs> they went five for eight from behind the arc, six for six at the line, and only three turnovers. Oaks, two for six from the field, 0 for two from three, one for two from the line, nine turnovers. That may be the best quarter Fort Cobb's played in a while. That was an outstanding quarter. Oaks, first possession of the second period. Shot no good by Quinn. Lady Mustangs now on the attack. Silverhorn right side to go to Brown. To Reagan Rip, who's made a couple of threes from that same spot. You say they were 60, what percent? 62%. 62% from the three-point line in the first period. That, that's outstanding. They'll win you a lot of games. There's going to be a travel on Savage. And she is... Uh, Lady Mustangs have both both their post players in the lineup now. Neither one of them has picked up a personal foul, which is good news. They, Lady Mustangs, matter of fact, just have one team foul so far. So they played a good, clean game, even though they've been putting a lot of pressure on them. Three-pointer good by Kinsey Quinn. And she has six of the eight points for Oaks with a long three-pointer. And the Mustangs content to kind of slow the pace down here. Brown with it right side. Oaks in that 2-1-2 two -two zone. Savage looked like she was thinking about shooting three there, Blake. But passed it off instead. Now in the corner to Reagan. That's Puckett poking at it. And Brown to Bear. Gets her defender off the air. Drop the ground. Shot is no good, but Bear will go to the line to shoot two more. Good move there on Watkins. As she was able to get Watkins off the floor and went right around her. It's probably one of the oldest tricks in the book, isn't it? Pump fake. I think it's it's, it's a kind of a lost art, but that was a good one. Bear makes another one. Riley Rep will check in, replacing Savage. That's seven for Ginger so far. Five of them coming from the free throw line. She'll have one more attempt. Six, now we're at six for six. 25 now. 25 to eight. In the backcourt, Oaks. Now they're trapped at the half line, and that's that's great defense right there. This ball is saved into Reagan. She'll take it all the way down, and her shot's blocked from behind, but Silverhorn's there to rebound the miss. To Bear, a little 12 footer in the lane won't go. Got her own rebound. Putback's no good. Great hustle by Ginger. And she missed the little 10 footer, and Hurried in there to get the rebound. And a foul is going to be charged to Chassie Tucker, her first, and that's a seventh team foul on Oaks. So the Lady Mustangs will be shooting free throws from here on in on any foul. 
I tell you, Ginger's locked in on these free throws. That's what? Seven, seven. out of seven. And she'll have one more. Eight for eight. Impressive. Got ten points on the night. Double digits here early in the second period with a 27-8 lead. Glad we're setting up top. Maybe they can't hear us from up here. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to jinx them. And there's another turnover on the Lady War. You know this deep, this pressure in the backcourt's not all at it. You know, it's not like they're really in their face, but they're kind of inviting them to come across half line and they try to trap them. And so far, Oaks has been real hesitant uh, to advance the ball and it's caused several turnovers. Into Bear, in the corner to Reagan Whip. Rip, three pointer, good. That's three of those for Reagan. Here in the first half. I suspect uh, playing here last week probably helped these girls in accustomed to this gym. Great play by Riley Rip to anticipate. Jumped in front, intercepted the pass off to her sister Reagan. Her floater won't go, and Oaks with the rebound. Near steal. Kenzie Quinn comes away with it. But they played here last Friday and Saturday, and so they're shooting the ball quite a bit better uh, today, Blake. As a matter of fact, they're, they're shooting the lights out. Matter of fact, they've been impressive. Another turnover on Oaks. I think, according to my count, that's 10. What about 13. 13, okay, that's a better count. There's a bear, a little 16-footer straight away. Good. Got the nice bounce. Shooter's roll. I'm telling you. Hit the rim twice and went in. Good soft touch. You know, you ever seen the movie Space Jam? Uh, yes. You know, whenever Michael Jordan gets out and he's golfing, uh -huh. they got the magnet underneath the green <laughs> while he's putting. It yeah. kind of feels like how they're shooting right now. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. Yeah. Foul is going to be on Bear. That's her first personal. And at the line will be Brixie Watkins for her first attempt from the line. And the first one's no good. And Brixie will have one more. Missed them both. And Zoe Brown now into the front court for the Lady Mustangs. Quickly over to Riley Rip, left wing three on the way, no good. Nice rebound there by Rachel Puckett. Pass down in the corner, into the paint to Puckett. Goes around her defender, lays it in for two. Good move there by Puckett for her first basket. And it's 32 to 10. That's Bear. They don't put a lot of pressure when you catch the ball at the free throw line. They kind of let you just do what you want. Shot no good by Rep. Bear's putback's no good. And Watkins there clears the board. And we're going to have a turnover on the Lady Oaks as they stepped on the sideline. Good defense once again, using that sideline to our advantage. It's almost like a third defender. Absolutely. We've seen people do that to us a few times That's this year. Right. I think it's about time we paid them back, right? There you go. Reagan Rep in the corner. Bounce pass to Bear. 17-footer, no good, but she was hacked on the arm. And that's not a really wise thing to do. No. Foul a jump shooter who's made eight free throws in a row. <laughs> Foul is charged to Laney Martinez. I believe all five starters for Oaks now have a foul. And once again, Ginger drains the free throw. Watkins is going to be replaced again by Alyssa Hawley for Oaks. And Bear will have one more attempt. Free throw no good this time. It's bound to end sometime, I guess. Time to start a new streak now. Oaks into the front court. That's Puckett over to Tucker, dribbling out front with Brown on They lob it to Holly, a little too tall, and it sails out of bounds. 
And it's turned over to Fort Cobb with 3.24 to play second period. In the corner is Reagan. Back to Brown out front. Five of the Lady Mustangs, they played seven players. Five of them have scored so far. Brown it kicks it out to Riley Rip. Left wing three, good. <laughs> Riley drains her third. She's trying to keep up with her sister. Both of them <laughs> have, have three trays here in the first half. Good find there from Joey Brown. Pass intercepted by Reagan Rip. Three on two. Silverhorn over to Brown. Fumbled the pass just a bit. Wasn't able to get the shot off. Now Brown goes around a defender. Tries to kick it to Bear, but it rolls out to Reagan. I'd like to see Brown get on the board here. An opportunity. And she has it. Ball fake. In the corner to Riley Rip. Pretty good ball movement. Then they throw it over. Kind of. She zigged when she thought she was going to zag, I think, right, right there. And a little yeah. miscommunication. And that's a turnover to Oaks with 2.15 to play. First half. In the corner, Oaks has it. Over to Rachel Puckett. Seems a bit odd. Uh, there's a little 14-footer, no good. Rebound Brown. And we're playing here on a Friday afternoon. But the weather set everyone back a day, so it's going to kind of change our weekend plans. But that's all right. I hopefully we'll be back here tomorrow watching the girls take on someone at 1.30 tomorrow afternoon if they win this game. I believe it'll be the loser of Coyle and Lomega, right? I believe so. I see Coyle's coach down here watching the game, taking mental notes. Uh, Coached at Coyle for a long time. He coached at Bingeroni back uh, 20 years ago, probably. There's a turnover. Up ahead to Silverhorn. Left-handed layup is swatted away, but going to be a foul charge to Rachel Puckett. He, uh, he was the coach of the team that I was trying to think about the other day when Fort Cobb girls played in the semifinals in the State Fairgrounds Arena. It was Coyle. Was and that, okay. that, was, that was the fellow that was coaching them. And we lost uh, lost a heartbreaker, and I'm pretty sure Coyle won the next day for the state championship, if I'm not mistaken. That was back uh, when my old friend, uh, Will Mike Sebastian, who I worked for at the Warstar Valley Bank, his daughter was on that team. And that has been, I'm going to say, seven or eight years ago, probably. About 2014. Probably. Had Michaela about Sebastian, uh -huh. Sydney Devon. Yes, that's, yeah. it. that's the team right there. Coyle. Yeah, I'd, I, I believe I remember that now. Yeah, I think we were, I think we shot a, I don't think it went in, but we, we took, we dribbled the length of the floor, I think, and shot it just after the buzzer, a chance to win it. Shot from about the free throw line, I think, as I recall. Minute to play, opening half. Lady Mustangs have played quite well here in the first half. They lead it 39 to 10. Three-pointer on the way, no good. Oaks with the rebound. Little baseline 12 footer, no good. And a putback is no good by Tucker. And finally, Reagan Rip gets the rebound off to Brown with 35 seconds to play. Quickly into the front court. To Weaver. Skip pass over to Reagan. Now Weaver has it. Opportunity to get some of these youngsters in here uh, today, Blake, in the playoff situation. Always good for your depth down the road. Savage is a freshman. Weaver's a freshman. Both of them out there. Reagan's a freshman. we got three freshmen on the floor right now. Little 15-footer good. Zoe Brown gets in the scoring column. And that will do it. Your halftime score. What Cobb rocks and Lady Mustangs, 41. Oaks Lady Warriors, 10. We'll turn it over to Blake Perryman for the halftime wrap-up. Blake? You know, it's been, well, actually, I don't know if there's been a game the Lady Mustangs have played and shot this well. I'm sure it hasn't, yeah. There's been some games where we didn't even score 41 points. Yeah. And, yeah. and here we have 41 41, you know, that's pretty. And that's pretty yeah, good exactly. for sure. anybody. Uh, exactly, yeah. Lady Mustangs are 11 for 24 
from the field, 46%. 58% from three, it's seven for 12. Seven and for 12, that's pretty, you know, that's hard to do that in a gym when there's no one guarding you. you know? Yeah, that's hard to do in practice. That's what I mean, yeah. 12 for 14 from the free throw line. You know, you don't see very many games where you shoot 14 free throws, let alone in the first half. And the good thing about it is we made 12 of them. That's, you know, that'll that'll win you some games down it the will. stretch when exactly. you shoot free throws like that. That's so right. 86% from the free throw line. Only five turnovers at the break for the Lady Mustangs. Oaks is 25% from the field and 20% from three, four for 16 and one for five. And then they're 25% from the free throw line at one for four and 17 turnovers at half for Oaks. And you know, even after that. Internet to Fort Cobb. Having fast internet is a must have. Whether you're working Oaks actually led two to nothing. Mm -hmm. And after that, Lady Mustangs pretty much took over. Yeah, I'd say so. And that might be the I understatement of the year, Blake. Right <laughs> <laughs> if that's the understatement of the year, <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Yeah, good, great first half for Fort Cobb. They lead it 41 to 10. Thanks for joining us for the broadcast today, folks. Uh, I'd like to thank once again our sponsors all season long, the Southwest Oklahoma Driving School, Carnegie Fiber, Keystone Foods, Washita Valley Bank, T-Birds Convenience Store, and Shelly Dissey with ABC Superior Realty. Just to kind of give you a heads up, folks, we are going to have uh, this game today. We're going to, when it's completed, uh, Dover boys will be taking on Oaks Warriors. And uh, then tonight, in the winner's bracket, the Port Cobb Broxton Mustangs will be taking on the Payton Pirates. And we'll be on the air approximately 7.45 tonight for as the Mustangs playing in the winner's bracket of the regional tournament. Big ball game tonight, obviously, if uh, if they win. Learning from home. Uh, yeah. They'll play Saturday night. Um, also, another big part of it, if you win, it's a double elimination tournament, so if you win tonight's game for the boys, uh, they'll automatically get to go to the area. You know that for sure. Right. So and then if they win Monday, they'll just have to play one, one win in one area. Game. That's right. So... The more uh, you stay in that winter side, uh, you play a whole lot less games. But uh, Lady Mustangs doing well here. They're on the uh, they're in the consolation side of the bracket, so a little different for them. If they if they lose a the game, it's over. But uh, as Blake mentioned, they got to win six games to get to that state tournament. But you don't look at it like that. You just look at it like we got to win today. That's that's yep. all you can say. Just and uh, worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. And uh, it, it's it's like you know what they say in March Madness for the. NCAA tournament, the winner stays. Yeah, well, there you go. Kind of thing. There you go. And you'll uh, you'll worry about the next opponent after this game's over. So anyway, we'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll have second half action. You're listening to the Mustangs Basketball Network. Why we are building a fiber network in your community. We have wireless internet solutions too, available at Fort Cobb Lake, Crow's Roost, Alfalfa, and more. You can count on us for a fast, reliable connection to the world. We're proud to be a local provider that's part of your community. Get connected to Carnegie Fiber today. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Pros with Squirtle Live. Find out more at squirtle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people. 
and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. Versatile Networks can handle all of your school or business technology and wiring needs. Expanding into a new building or office space, we would love to give you a free quote for your network wiring. Are your computers outdated? Are your servers slow? Is your network underperforming? Is your wireless network weak? Let Versatile Networks come in and assess the situation and get you back up and running the way you should be. Call Versatile Networks today at 405-217-0267 or visit versatilenetworks.com for more information. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now. Welcome back to Dover. We're about set to go here for the second half of action. It'll be the Lady Mustangs basketball going left to right. In their home white uniforms leading 41 to 10. Glad you're along with us. Hope you enjoy the second half. Left wing three by Bear is no good. You don't often see her shoot three-pointers. That Oaks quickly into the front court. There's a near steal by Silverhorn. And they're going to have a jump ball as Zoe Brown did a good job of reaching in there and tying them up. And the ball will stay with Oaks on the alternating possession. Just underway here in the third period. Lady Mustangs on top, 41 to 10. Inbounds play, they go to number 11. Shot is good by Rachel Puckett. That's four for Rachel. And Oaks scores the first basket here of the third period. Oaks still in that 2-1-2 uh, -two zone, but the guards really pressure you out on the front. Brown quickly out the silver horn. Left wing three on the way, no good. Battle for the rebound is controlled by Oaks. Silverhorn had a good, good look at it. Lady Mustangs had six players of the seven who played in the scoring column there in the first half. Outstanding balance scoring. They get the ball quickly down to Watkins. Missed the first one, got her own rebound and put it back in for two. I tell you, once she gets the ball there, as tall as she is, it's uh, she's kind of like Courtney Parrish, if you remember her yeah. back in the day when she played for OU. <laughs> She got a lot of double-doubles because she'd missed the three-pointer by Reagan. Rep is there. That's four for Reagan. But Courtney would miss the first one, and it'd come right back to her, and she put it back in. So she'd get points and rebounds all in the same trip. And that's what Watkins did there a moment ago. But Reagan Rep with four trays so far. It's about time for Riley to try to match that <laughs> here. that ne up again. Next trip will look down at the town of two. And Riley jumps in to intercept the pass. Kind of right on cue trying to lob it into the post player. Now there's Riley. They get it to her in the corner. She's wide open. One more pass. But Reagan will try from the left wing. This time it's no good. Silverhorn with the rebound. Underneath the Riley rep. 
Turn around, <laughs> shot is blocked. <laughs> I could hear a lot of ball, but when, mm. you, when you crash it down like that, there's going to be some contact. And that will be the third foul on Watkins. And Riley, it's a good thing she hit the ball and not Riley. That might have hurt. And Riley's free throw is no good. She'll have one more with a 44-14 lead. And a second free throw is good by Riley. Gives her 10 points on the night. And once again, this kind of token pressure in the backcourt trying to invite them to cross the timeline and pick up their dribble. Into Watkins. Hands it off to Quinn. Over to Tucker, but they say she traveled on the way to the hoop. And Watkins is going to be replaced by Alyssa Holly for the Lady Warriors. You know, they had such a long drive over here. I wonder if they've made hotel plans uh, in well, the area, you know, because uh, they, you know, they would play tomorrow afternoon as well if they win today. So it would be a long drive back to east of Tulsa and then turn around and come back in the morning. Brown, right wing three Backboard. on the way off Ooh. the glass. No good. Thought I could call it for her. Yeah, it was almost down. Tucker quickly into the front court. Brown harassing her. And we're going to have a jump ball. And it will go to Fort Cobb Broxton on the alternating possessions. Been a fun game so far for Lady Mustang. She's Silverhorn with a big smile on her face as she crosses the timeline. This is it's what you play for here, to play off games and you're playing well. And they're going to get to advance till tomorrow, you know it? You know, one thing we talk about during baseball season, and there in the middle of the season, we kind of went on a little slump, lost a few games in a row. And Coach Bellamy said, it's, it's not real fun whenever you're losing. But, man, it's fun whenever you're winning. Oh, yeah. You can yep. have a lot of fun whenever you're winning, yep. especially whenever you have a 31-point lead. Absolutely. I used to tell my kids this long shot off the glass, no good. Battle for the rebound. Holly went over the back, I believe. That'll be three on her, I think. But I used to tell my kids a lot when they were playing that uh, I wanted them to enjoy it. And, and I've heard other people say this. It's not original with me by any means, but uh, it, it's, not about the des it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. Right. And uh, about the journey, not the destination, I guess you'd say. But, you know, you got to have fun while you're going, and you got to appreciate it because uh, when it's over, it's over, just like that, you know. And then even when you win it all, uh, the next day it's over, and, and you, you start wondering, now what am I going to do, you know. So you got to really appreciate games like this when you get to travel on the bus and uh, win a game and advance to the next game. You know, there's just nothing really quite like the, the thrill of victory, as they say. And uh, certainly the Must Lady Mustangs are enjoying that today so far, halfway through the third period. And uh, it's just uh, there'll be a big crowd here tomorrow, I promise you. On a Saturday afternoon, a lot of people will be able to come to the game. It's kind of hard to get to afternoon session on a Friday for the fans, especially when you travel this far from home. Here comes Bear. Fast break up ahead of the pack. Her lay layup's no good. Reagan there for the putback. And right now, they're kind of letting things, uh, officials are kind of wanting the clock to run. Uh, it appears they're not, not blowing their whistle a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Can you blame them? No, I'm with them. I'm, I'm right with them. Don, you know, I was wondering, uh, Roth and Lokiba, the boys, played last night How'd that and go? Roth ended up winning by seven and you know I won't get too much into a few of the things that surround that game but I really wanted Lokiba to win that one yeah what was what for was a few this? different reasons what final was score was 38 31 wow, low scoring game very low scoring mm -hmm. Roth's number one in class B mm -hmm. uh, and Lokiba plays better than what their ranking oh, would suggest and no they're question. not even ranked no so. question about it 
There's going to be a foul on Bear as Holly took it to the hoop. Yeah, Vokiva Sickles has, uh, you know, they, Mountain View Godibo is ranked number one, right. and they only beat them four points. Right. And what makes us feel good about it is we beat them at, by 30. Yeah. Yeah, we, we uh, I tell you what, we play that well the way we did that night. Uh, they'll win a lot of ball games. Fort Cobbles go a long ways. Free throw no good by Holly. Yeah, that's an interesting score. I, I would I would say that uh, they definitely slowed the pace down. Someone did probably. It's going to be a foul charge to Fort Cobb. It's going to be Reagan Rep, I believe. That'll be her second personal with 3.11 to play in the third period. The Oaks, the Lady Warriors will inbound. Lob it out front, Quinn. Bounce pass to Puckett. They lob it down to Holly who got behind Bear and she couldn't handle a pass. Does that referee look like Tyler Walters to you from here? I think it is. Is it? I, don't I believe it is. I didn't know Tyler was an official. I don't think. I guess it, now we do. I don't think it is. I think it just looks like him. Looks an awful lot like him. Tyler's good young man, ambulance driver, Carnegie EMT. Does a lot of great things in Caddo County area, taking the injured and to the hospitals. And Tyler does a great job. All his crew does. There's three pointer won't go. Riley Rip. Takes it away from Tucker. Her layup is good. <laughs> Riley with 12 points tonight. And there's a steal by Reagan. Intercepted pass. Two on one against Tucker. Pass over to Silverhorn. Back to Reagan. Bounce it off the glass for two. That's called teamwork. That's good ball movement right there for sure. That's 14 for Reagan. And there's 2.05 to play in the third period. They've created lots of turnovers at the, at the quarter break. We'll count those up for you. Reagan gets another one. Now she's going to be, it's going to be a jump ball, and it'll go over to Oaks. So that'll be a turnover on Fort Cobb. At the quarter break, we'll get all the statistics for the three, three periods from Blake. I tell you, old Blake does a great job keeping these stats. He's got a little handheld device. There's going to be a foul on Fort Cobb. Number one, they say. Zoe Brown. It's her first. But he keeps all these scores and missed shots and turnovers and all these things on his phone. Well, normally I do it on the iPad. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter how you do it. You're, hey, you're pretty I good at it. it. Pretty good at it. it. It makes things easy. Yeah. A lot easier than counting them all up. The pencil and the paper kind of went out the window for that kind of work, in it? Well, my my math's a little bit slower than it used to be. <laughs> so. Well, you know, when you're trying to calculate 18 out of 71 or something like that, right. it's, you, know, you gotta need a little help sometimes. Weaver is going to check in for Reagan Rep for the Lady Mustangs, and Savage will check in also. And she's going to replace Riley Rep. I'm sure Coach Rogers would love to see these girls get a little rest. Uh, if they can today. It's a long bus ride home, and then they've got to go to Coil tomorrow. And So if you can save your legs today, it'll help you, because uh, tomorrow uh, you're going to be playing someone that loses tonight. Is that not right? I believe so. Yeah. So the team that loses in the other regional tonight. I guess we sort of have an advantage so in that, though. As far as the rest goes, absolutely. Plus the other side of that is uh, that team's going to be coming off of a loss. So, you know, at Psychologically, there's a good basket by Ginger Bear. That's 17 for Ginger. Psychologically, you know, you you come in off a loss, you could be kind of down in the dumps, whereas Fort Cobb's going to be on a high after playing so well today. Down to Holly, bounce it off the glass for two. That's four points for Alyssa Holly. And there's 115 to play here in the third period. Brown into Bear, free throw line over to Savage. Now Brown's holding out front with a minute to play. Down to Bear, and she's going to be fouled by Holly as Holly went around the shoulder to try to tap it away. And that'll be four on Holly. Third team foul 
on Oaks, so non-shooting situation here. And Silverhorn inbounding to Bear. Double team, kicks it in the corner to Silverhorn. Now to Zoe Brown, right wing three on the way. No good off the back iron. And a nice rebound by Kinsey Quinn. Tucker picks up his, her dribble at the free throw, her half line over in the corner they go. 34 seconds to play. There's a drive along the baseline through the lane. Pass left wing is out of bounds. Turnover back to Fort Cobb. <laughs> 25 seconds to play. We'll see what Fort Cobb musters up here for the final possession. Silverhorn, or that's Brown, holding out front. Good ball handler, old Zoe. Tell you what, these Lady Mustangs are battle tested. They've played a lot of tough teams this year. Four seconds, Silverhorn inside the three point arc. Three pointer won't go. And after three periods of play, Fort Cobb Roxton 51, Oaks Lady Warriors 17. You're listening to the Mustangs Basketball Network. For more information, Washita Valley Bank, locally owned and operated since 1902, proudly serving the Fort Cobb area with knowledgeable and friendly professionals that actually care about your financial well-being. Online banking, loans, certificate of deposit, safe deposit boxes, 24-hour telephone banking, and an ATM. For service you can trust, Washita Valley Bank, 405-643-2305, member FDIC. Proud supporters of Fort Cobb Mustangs. The name of the store is T-Birds. Come see Connie for our daily lunch specials. Mm-mm good. We offer cold drinks, hot food, and a clean environment. Also, $1 Fountain Pop Wednesdays. See you soon. We are your premier best-in-state driving school, located in southwest Oklahoma at Fort Cobb Public School. We can provide all the services related to driving in the state of Oklahoma, such as driver's education, in-house testing capabilities, permits, and drive testings for a license. The only thing that you will be required from DPS is your eye exam. We have certified instructors that use... What's your statistics there after three quarters, Blake? Lady Mustangs are 41% from the field and 44% from three, 81% from the free throw line, eight turnovers for them. Oaks, 32% from the field, 14% from three, 25% from the line with 28 turnovers. At, at 44%, three-point shooting for the Lady Mustangs is quite impressive. They've made uh, seven, eight of them so far in the game. Savage will try free throw line jumper is good. That's Madison's fourth point. Wide open from the free throw line. Yeah, you know, if you can shoot north of 35% on three-point shooting, that uh, win you a lot of ball games. There's another turnover. Silverhorn has it. The Savage ball has her pocket picked by Rachel Puckett. And Oaks now on the attack. Just underway here, fourth period. Try to get it into Watkins, but it's taken away. Silverhorn into the front court. Right side to Brown. Shot too hard. And a rebound by Kenzie Quinn. Chassis Tucker dribbling out front. Lobs it over to Quinn. Down low to Watkins. Bumps it off the glass for two. That's four points for Brixie. And it's 53-19. What time did y'all leave Fort Cobb today, Blake? 10 this morning. 10 o'clock on the bus. You stop anywhere on the way? Yeah, we stopped at Subway, so we at least got something to eat. Three-pointer no good by Caden Holman, who checked in a moment ago. And also checking in now for Fort Cobb will be number 10. That's Anaya Funmaker replacing Kalia Silverhorn, who gets a nice hand from the folks here in, Fort in the Dover. Got a bunch of freshmen on the floor for the Lady Mustangs. 
Three-pointer on the way good by Laney Martinez. That's her first basket of the day. We got Weaver, Funmaker, Savage, our, thr our freshman, and then we have Brown who is a sophomore and Holman a junior. Brown gets it over to Weaver, out front to Funmaker, to Brown at the elbow. Left side, Holman shots deflected, taken out of the air by Watkins, and then she lost it out of bounds. I like Subway. Matter of fact, I really enjoy their ham, ham sandwiches with some of that Southwest Chipotle dressing on it, and some jalapenos. Man, you can't beat it. There you go. Brown holding out front to Savage, and they're going to call Savage for traveling. You see. Caught the ball, tried to make a quick move around Watkins, and a little too quick. And it'll be Oaks basketball. Bounce pass to the free throw line. Good defense there by Funmaker. They have to go back out front to Tucker. Back in the paint to go to Watkins. Shot's no good over Savage. You got a rebound and put it back in, and she drew the foul. That's six for Watkins. She's tall enough, she can just go over the back of you and get the yeah. ball, and it's not a foul. Foul is on Anaya Funmaker. And Watkins, who is 0 for 2 at the line, will have the opportunity for three-point play. That's no good. Offensive rebound, putback's no good. By Puckett, but she'll go to the line to shoot two. And that first personal will be charged to Caden Holman. And Puckett, who has four points so far tonight, makes her first free throw. And she'll have one more. Rattled out, but they got the offensive rebound. Good steal by Brown, and then she lost it. Oaks to inbound. They lob it way out front. Kenzie Quinn. The late foot jumper won't go. Reaver had it briefly, and then someone is knocked to the floor. And they say the foul is going to be charged to Rixey Watkins, and that'll be her fourth personal. And Savage. I think maybe caught something in the nose. She seems to be in some pain. And the coach is tending to her with a towel. And checking in for Oaks. Number 10, I believe, is uh, Sierra Reeser for the first time. And Ginger Berry will check in, replacing Savage. As Savage and Coach Schumpert went to the locker room to, and here come the uh, cleanup buck bucket. <laughs> Hands it to Coach Rogers. Said, "Here, clean it up, Coach." She's got the spray bottle and the paper towels, and it's going to be spick and span here in a minute, Blake. There you go. And here comes a couple of people from Dover out to assist. <laughs> Not often you see the, uh, <laughs> the coach, <laughs> coach, coach out, out clean, there cleaning, cleaning up it, one yeah. of her players' blood on off the floor. But anyway, I tell you what, they've treated us well here in Dover. We we were here last uh, Friday and Saturday, and been here today, and uh, the folks here have been really nice to us. And uh, first time I'd ever been here, and uh, nice nice little community. And as we talked about last week, there's. They were really, Lady Longhorns were a juggernaut back in the early 2000s as they won four out of, uh, three in a row, I believe. 2001, 2002, 2003, and then they skipped four and they won in five. So it, four out of five years there, they won state championships, class, class B girls basketball. A lot of good tradition here in Dover. 
in the wheat buckle, I think that's what yeah. they call this up here. We're in wheat country, a lot of cattle company. Chisholm Trail is not far from here, I think. There's a uh, actually, I think there. there's a sign out here but by the gym that says the exact center point of the Chisholm Trail. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I had read that on the Internet. I didn't know it was right here, so might have to stop and read that plaque. The exact center point of the Chisholm Trail. The exact Inter center. Very interesting. Yep. A lot of history here as they had their cattle drives right through Well, here. it makes Amazing, sense that they're the Longhorns, doesn't it? Absolutely. That would make sense. On the floor now for the Lady Mustangs, we've got Brown, Funmaker, Weaver, Bear, and Holman. And on the floor for Oaks, we have Reeser, Puckett, Martinez, and number 24 is Talisha Russell. And there's a steal by Martinez. Off to Reeser, 15-footer won't go. Bear with a nice rebound. And number 12 is the other one for Oaks is Kinsey Quinn. Weaver will try 17-footer. It's no good. And Oaks with the rebound with 3.42 to play in the contest. Set to check in for Fort Cobb will be Tegan Devon and Faith Harrison. A couple more freshmen set to check in. Foul is going to be charged to number 10. And that will be on Ania, Ania Funmaker. And Brown and Ginger Bear take a seat for their final time this evening. Going to get a little rest for tomorrow's contest. Three-pointer on the way from corner, no good. Oaks with the rebound. No good shot by Martinez, and going to have a jump ball. And Dover will maintain possession with 3.04 to play. A Kingfisher's a nice town. Uh, yeah. I took my, uh, had to come up here yesterday to a doctor's appointment, and there's inbounds pass to Puckett's good, easy too. But uh, after the doctor's appointment, I came up to Okarchi and took our granddaughter to swimming lessons, which is over in Kingfisher. Kingfisher has out by the golf course. Three-pointer by Funmaker is no good, but they've got a, a big indoor swimming pool, heated swimming pool. It's got two diving boards. One of them's a high dive. They've got a water slide. Uh, they've got a little kiddie pool that you can just walk right down into, no steps. Nice locker rooms, a little concession stand. It's a... It's, yeah, it's a really a first-class first facility located uh, 10 miles from here in Kingfisher, Oklahoma. Foul was charged to Faith Harrison, and at the line is Talisha Russell, and her first free throw is no good. But what I liked about the swimming pool was it was heat indoors. It, was, it felt like a sauna in there, and on a cold, <laughs> windy day, not a bad one. I, I sat in kind of one of those uh, lawn chairs beside the pool and watched my granddaughter swim, and it, it was quite enjoyable, to tell you the truth. <laughs> if I'd have had a chocolate milkshake, I'd have had her made. <laughs> Didn't touch the rim on the shot, so it'll go to Fort Cobb with 2.35 to play in the contest. A savage comes out of the locker room with a little holding a bandage up to her nose. I think she got hit across the bridge of the nose. And There's a three-pointer on the way, no good by Holman. And Quinn with a rebound. Bounce pass poked away. Here comes Holman with it. Her layup is good and a foul. Caden Holman with her first basket. Foul is charged to Sierra Reeser, her first personal. And Caden Holman, junior lady Mustangs, will be her first trip to the line. 
And we're going to have a violation. They said she was on the line. She made it, but it didn't count. That's, that's a shame. And Oaks now with a basketball. They lob it back behind the zone. Shot no good. Another offensive rebound by Oaks, and they lose it out of bounds. Now the question remains, Blake, with all these Fort Cobb fans here, what are they going to do for the next uh, four hours between before Fort Cobb plays again? Got any suggestions for them? Uh, I'm sure there's something in Kingfisher, you know. Yeah. Go find something to eat. There you go. But you know, me and you, we don't get to go. We're going to have. Well, we get to we, watch basketball. All right, so yeah, we're going to we're going to stay here and watch some basketball games. Inbounds pass is stolen away. Yeah, we we got our instructions earlier that we were told to stay here and chill. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Might take a nap. And shot's good. By number 24, that is Talisha Russell. It's her first basket. And a foul. That will be the eighth team foul on Fort Cobb. is charged to Anaya Funmaker, her third. And she makes the free throw. 55 to 30. It was 51-17 to 17 at the end of the third quarter. They've outscored us 13-4 to 4 here in the fourth. And that pass is intercepted into the backcourt. Battle for it. Devon does a good job hustling to save the turnover. And now Holman has it taken away. And it's turned over to Oaks. With 106 to play. And we're going to have another substitution for Oaks. That's Allie Real checking in, replacing Sierra Reeser. Probably a little different driving up here without George Mo Pope, the bus driver, wouldn't it? <laughs> Kinda. George will be here tonight, I'm sure. Three pointer won't go. Mr. Biddy drive your bus today? No. No. Coach Rogers did. Coach Rogers drove the bus today. Okay. She's had a busy day. She's drove the bus, coached the game, and cleaned up the floor. <laughs> now, and and we tried to convince her before the game that she she should come come on here and have a post game interview. Yeah, what'd she say to that? She said, Yeah. Oh, is she coming over? I don't know. I guess we'll find well, out. Well if she does, you can just you can ask her all the questions you That'd be a great idea. And there's going to be a foul on Oaks, number 24, Talisha Russell. With 26 seconds to play. Right under the basket. Shot no good by Harrison. Or I'm sorry, that was Devon. There's a drive, shot no good, rebound by Devon with 13 seconds to play, racing it into the front court. It's poked out of bounds by Allie Real with 10 seconds. We'll see if Fort Cobb tries to score anymore, if they're content to dribble it out here. Inbound to Weaver. Over to Devon, she'll try the left wing three, it's no good. Rebound Weaver, put back no good, two seconds. Harrison's little shot, good. Anaya Funmaker, your final score. Fort Cobb Broxton, 57. Oaks Lady Warriors, 32. So congratulations to the Lady Mustangs if they have advanced into the second round of the consolation bracket of the regional tournament. They will play right uh, at 1.30 tomorrow in Coyle, Oklahoma. I almost said back here in Dover, but they will play it coiled <laughs> tomorrow at 1.30. It sure would be nice if we could play You're here right. in Dover it's if they're going to shoot that well. It's another quite a little distance over to Coil tomorrow, but we're happy to go. Congratulations to Coach Rogers and Lady Mustangs. 
And we'll turn it over to Blake for the post-game wrap-up. Blake? Lady Mustangs finished 36% from the field, shot 18 for 50, 36% from three, and eight for 22, 13 for 16 from the free throw line, 16 turnovers. Oaks, 33% from the field, 13 for 39, 18% from three, two for 11, and 29% from the free throw line, four for 14, 35 turnovers. Well, I wish we and could save some of them for later on. Well, you know? yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Individually for the Lady Mustangs, Ginger Bear leads all scores with 17 points tonight. Reagan Rep 14, Riley Rep 12. Clea Silverhorn and Madison Savage both had four. Zoe Brown, Caden Holman, and Anaya Funmaker all had two for the Lady Mustangs. You know, you, that's a pretty good game when three of your five starters are in double figures. And I just hope we can continue that the rest of the way. I do too. Uh, since the team that will play, the two teams don't play until tonight, I guess we can give an update during the boys game. That'd be great. About uh -huh. who they'll play. They'll play the loser of Lomega and Coil. They play at 6.30 tonight, I believe, in Coyle. So uh, Lomega's number one in the state. Yeah, pretty good and chance we'll play Coyle, I would guess. I would, I would say the, the – Favorite would be Lomega in that one, so. Yep. More than we'll likely Coil, but, but. We'll wait and see, right? We'll make sure tonight. We, one thing we know, that the is, Lady Mustangs will be there. That's right. All right, thank you very much, Blake. Great job reporting. Once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors for broadcast this today and all throughout the year. Southwest Oklahoma Driving School, Carnegie Fiber, Keystone Foods, Washita Valley Bank, T-Birds Convenience Store, and Shelly Dissey with ABC Superior Realty. So thanks to all those fine sponsors for putting us on the air. Thanks for joining us, folks. We're going to take a about a 10-minute break. We're going to come back. We're going to do over on the Dover Longhorn Network. We're going to have the Dover Longhorns and the Oaks Warriors. That will be on DoverLonghorns.com if you choose to tune in and watch that. Otherwise, for the Mustang fans, we will back, be back on the air tonight about 7.45. Fort Cobb Broxton Mustangs taking on the Payton Pirates tonight on fcbmustangs.tv. So for John Bellamy, Caden Baker, Blake Perryman, I'm Don Tyson saying we'll see you shortly.